the Speakers Bank Podcast. Our voices, our views. Hi, my name is Jarrett. Working with Speakers Bank. Uh, hello, Mr. Silence. Oh, Jerry, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm here to interview you about um, as an elderly person living with disability and aging. So, what is your idea or definition of positive aging? How do you think we can promote positive aging? Well, I take objection to the whole thing. I don't believe in aging. I think it's stupid. All of us are aging, but once you accept that label, you start to think, oh, I'm losing my memory, I can't do this, or I can't do that. I don't care if you're 50, 30, 20, 15, if you come to me with a good idea, I'll accept that idea and get on with it. But to tell me I'm aging is, or positive aging, I'm not really interested in any of that sort of labeling. So, um, the second question we have is, what service would you like to see being offered in the community for elderly senior citizens? Like, what service would you like to be offered in the community as, you know, as elderly person you know, with disability? Mm. Well, I think opportunities for people to be engaged and particularly with younger people who are enthusiastic and positive and I think, well, one of my passions is gardening and I think um, the opportunity to be connected with gardening um, has a positive effect on your attitude to life. So more opportunities in that direction I think would be good. What about employment? For old, what about employment for old people? So, thank you yeah, for that. Well, the other thing is that worldwide now there is a movement for um, people to come out of retirement and to work and there are plenty of opportunities for that. One of the mistakes I think we make is that we assume that people get to a certain age and they're not capable anymore, but what we're doing is dismissing their experience and knowledge and the power of the experiences they've had. Thank you. You spoke about medical interventions in your blog. Can you tell us a little more about it? And mm. how can you tell us, and uh, can you tell us fulfilling your dreams or achieving your aims taking into consideration of your present situation? The research that's now taking place with spinal cord injury is massive, particularly in two areas. The stem cell injections, um, a revolution, a revolutionizing what we thought, what we, what we are capable of, and the same with brain computer interface, which means that people have having implants in their brains, enabling them to do things that weren't possible before, particularly able to walk, um, and things like virtual reality, which were loosely unknown five years ago and now becoming commonplace. And um, one of the, like five and a half years ago when I was first injured, I was told I would never walk. Well, now we're getting close. So who knows what the next couple of years will bring. Thank you. Do you think there can be improvements to support you get um, and how workers, um, our workers, people that are working with you, how they can improve 
Yeah, good job. Well, I'm, I'm fortunate to live in a place where I'm supported by nurses and disability support workers. And they, these are passionate people who bring not only medical support to me, but give me the help and support I need to achieve the goals I want to achieve. So I, I, if anything, I would say, pay these people more. What are the difference about the way you see things now? And what is your advice to people who find themselves in this situation? Well, I'm, a, I'm sure I'm giving advice. I think um, you work it out yourself. But I wrote um, four books before this injury, and they're all about people who survived tough times. So I continually go back to these people and their stories and get encouragement from these people and how they tackle this, their philosophy of life and the attitude they took to tough times. Today, it, um, so I have a different person every day I try to emulate. Catherine Graham, who uh, was shy, unassuming person, but was thrust into the position of being the major shareholder and publisher of the Washington Post. She went from a situation where she was timid and didn't know what to do to becoming the most powerful woman in America. And she did that with a simple philosophy. She let work transform her. And so today I think, okay, my work is writing, talking and publishing a blog. Let that work transform me and maintain me. Is there something positive that you feel as covered of living with disability? Sorry? Is there something positive that you think has come out of living with disability? Well, I don't live with a disability. <laughs> well, I live with a challenge and like all challenges, if you accept them and you look for a way through it to make it an opportunity, then success is a guarantee even if it's not the success that you imagine in the first place what is your advice for older people with disability or health issues who have dreams and find it difficult to carry on well i'm not big on message as an advice but I, what I do myself is every day I find a person to emulate and I keep myself positive by following the attitude of that person. Just this week I've had John Keats who wanted to write immortal poetry but he was discouraged by everyone he tried to get to respond to his poetry. But then he found out that Shakespeare himself suffered doubts. And it, John Keats then decided or adopted a policy of negative, negative capability, meaning that everyone seems to be affected by doubts about what they can achieve but you park those doubts and get on with your work and then there was robert goddard this week he was the founder of the rocket industry now when he started trying to find a liquid fluid for liquid fuel for rockets 
times everyone said it was impossible. But today, every rocket that goes up follows the scientific developments that Robert invented. So don't be put off by other people's small mindedness or criticism. Go for what you believe in, no matter how ambitious it is. So you can see that's this week. Next week I'll have another five people who I think about and try and emulate. Thank you. So thank you, Mr. Gerard Stevenson, for giving us, giving us the opportunity to interview you. And um, for more information, please contact Speakers Bank at 039 314 or www.speakersbank.org.au. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Speakers Bank. Please take the opportunity to like our Facebook page. Thank you. I'm Chariot. <laughs>